No, oh, not that one actually. Where else? <laughs> you're, you're kind of out of luck. I got bit. stuck on the last candy. Oh, really? <laughs> uh, my internet, I tell you, it has just been giving so many issues lately. I'm hanging <laughs> and what have you. Well, good evening, good morning, good afternoon, good beautiful day, wherever in the world you are. It's evening, yeah, as you can see. And it's Wellness Wednesday with my beautiful guest, as always. Bryce Watson from es Exoteric Atlanta. No, Esoteric Atlanta. I'm just kidding. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so I'm so happy to have you. You've been away yes. gallivanting as well. So firstly, where did you go? What did you do? I, was it fun? Yes, I was down in Florida, family down there. So um, it small little, I love Florida so much. It's just, uh, I never thought, you know, here in, in the United States, Florida was always that state we made fun of, but it's ended up being like the MVP of the United States because thank you to Santos, because uh, they basically have given the middle finger to, <laughs> to um, Mr. B. Um, and, and, you know, it's just nice. And it's nice to be I, just being in the sunshine and just being around the salt water and just being able to hear the ocean. There's just such healing there. Um, and just the calmness mm -hmm. of the way you know, it's a small town, so it's a very calm atmosphere and people are kind of on beach time all the time. And so, you know, the, the fruits and vegetables are grown on the property. And so you get fresh avocados and bananas and, you know, it's my dog Lovely. always in heaven because that's like he's he's just that's more like india and he's from india so he's always trying to catch the lizards and, you know, but I'm happy to be back as well back to filming again so welcome back and i am certainly happy to have you back because we did miss you a lot so mm -hmm. <laughs> today we have you with hand chakras and i'm super excited because i know a little bit about hand chakras but not too much so tonight i am most definitely your student as well regarding this and i'm very excited to hear about it so well speaking of the ch so the hand chakra actually guys connects to the heart chakra they're like an extension and i actually say this to my students a lot i know we're going to talk about feet eventually as well but when we're looking you know when we think about the chakra system we often think about the seven that we review the seven chakras that are in the actual torso up into the head this area but the body actually holds 140 chakras 140 and most of them we don't really pay attention to because if you think about like as i say to my students a lot when we think about the human body and the essence of life you can cut your arms and your legs off and you can still be alive right the the control station of everything really happens in this vicinity the whole you know head and torso don't want to cut your arms and legs off but but you can live without them right you can't live you wouldn't be able to live if your torso was cut in half or your head was cut off, right? So if we think about that aspect of these being their own energy cycles, but they're also power gridding from the main system, things get really, really interesting. And the fact that it's connected to Anahata makes it even makes more sense to me about how valuable the hands are. Now, the color for Anahata is not the same color as the hand chakras. Like green is here. The hand chakras are rose quartz color, like a light pink color. That would be their color. So when we're looking at our hands, what we do with our hands oftentimes signifies how we're feeling in the world, right? We pray with our hands. We cook with our hands. We also punch with our hands, slap with our hands, write with our hands, paint with our hands. And so every action we take with our hands is just a, an offshoot of what's happening here in the heart center, which makes sense because you also have chakras in your shoulders and your elbows. Yeah. And if we're closing down, we're going to pull these together versus opening them back up. But okay. It makes sense as well, because if you look at the heart, you know, it's kind of like your arms and your hands are an extension. So you either push away or you embrace, right? The hug, so, hugging, yeah. Yes. Exactly. So you either bring it towards you close to the heart, because when you hug, you're bringing something to the heart. So you're drawing it to this area. And if you're pushing it away, you're rejecting it. You don't want it, which is interesting. 
think about holding hands, the yeah. simple act of holding your lover's hand or your child's hand. That's an extension of caring for someone, which is coming from this heart center. And, um, you know, it's interesting when I, when we go over chanting in my classes, I always explain, like, when you chant, you don't smush your hands together, you keep them slightly open. And that's because the energy, the actual chakra is right in the middle of the palm. And so when you're chanting or praying, and you've got that openness, you're allowing the energy to start to swirl and move through and of course, move into the heart center. And so when I started to really look deeper into the hands, I was like, oh my gosh, that makes so much, so much, so much sense. Right. Absolutely. So now, um, Again, just so you, you guys remember, chakras are energy centers that transform ethereal, ethereal energy into physical energy. Just to remind you guys, I just want to put that disclaimer out that your chakra system, at least not now in our 3D world, maybe when we get to 4D, but don't go to your doctor and be like, I think my anahata is broken. Um, they won't know what you're talking about. This is all energetic body. <laughs> don't, it's not going to show up in MRI, guys. We're, if you go to the Ayurvedic doctor, he would absolutely or she would absolutely know which one she's yes, speaking But about. the Western doctor will be like, what? <laughs> I think Anahata is smashed. I need, I need a pill for this. No, you don't need a pill for this. But, you know, they would, they would, they would wrap you in a suit and send you to this insane asylum because this is all energetic body. Maybe in our new world, when we have a more evolved system, we'll be able to see, uh, see these actual energy, energy points. But right now, not going to happen. All right. So now again, hands, as we said, they're giving or receiving loves. Now there are two balls, as we talked about this with the other chakras as well, your energetic essence, your soul, your spirit, your psyche, whatever you want to call it, it doesn't just exist within your physical body. It also, there's an energy field that also, it's almost like when you put a pair of blue jeans on that are way too tight and you got that muffin top that hangs out over those blue jeans. That's what your spirit is doing with your body because your spirit is actually bigger than your physical body, right? So you basically, everybody's got muffin top. Basically. No, that is just awful. <laughs> everybody knows what I'm talking about, though. You've all, listen, if you're, especially females, you all have laid on the sofa the muffin the, top. and pull those jeans up with a coat hanger just to get them <laughs> off your legs. So, so your body is basically a muffin top, right? It's hanging out past your physical. But that is when we, we talk about the quantum. We talk about the entanglement. Like, that's how you are connected. Like, Shanti and I are in two different countries, miles apart. But I guarantee you our souls are connected through yeah. any, any quantum. And that's how you have like that telepathy, that telepathy with people. You know, when the phone rings and you know who it is, you're thinking of someone and they call. It's like that's that outside of your body connection, yeah. so quantum entanglement that you have with somebody else. So it, it's, it, it, yeah, and it's, it's, it's really about um, being open also, right? Um, uh, intuitively and, you know, in that way. So it's, your ESP is active, your intuition is active, you're meeting people on the same level who've got their intuition and their ESP active. So that's how we, and that's how we connect with each other sort of unexpectedly in an unexplained way. And it just happened in this way. And it's like, it fell into place. That's yeah. what happens when we obviously, yeah, open in that way and connecting with each other. It's actually quite beautiful. Yeah, it is beautiful. And you realize you're so much bigger. And that's with, with the hands. So if you think about the chakra center being in the center of the hand, there's actually two little balls of energy that live on the on the outside and the inside of the of the hand and the, the symbol of the visica pisces which is that kind of that eternal looping that's are the looping like that's also uh, described with the, the divine feminine also comes through the hand center we think yeah. about whether or not jesus christ was crucified or not where did they where they put the nail Wow. Interesting. The hands, right? That connects to the heart, right? So now the right side of your hand is, is energetically seen as the giving side where the left side is seen as the receiving side. Now that doesn't mean they can't switch energy, but traditionally just like right side is masculine, left side is feminine. Traditionally, they have their roles to play with giving and receiving energy. Right. And that's why some people who know how to do Reiki or know how to self heal can not actually take their own hands and start to give and receive with themselves as well. 
um, when they start to understand yeah. the way the energy functions through 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 the body. Now, for we we also they also talk about, and I kind of see this with even though uh, the third chakra, I think, is more like where the solar plexus are. That's the helio. That's kind of the sun of the body. Anyway, I think all chakras kind of have this little essence of sun. Well, the hand does as well. They're seen as a big big orb of sun right in the middle of the hand. Now, something I've done in different workshops before too, that people can do just very basic to start to understand the power of your hands is you sit and uh, you've probably done this before Shanti and you hold your hands mm -hmm. close together. Actively. Yeah. And you just, and you focus on that energy and it's not just lazily. It's you have to actively hold it there and you'll start to feel actually feel energy. Yeah. There we go. Yeah, you can do it on uh, if uh, if you have a friend in your life that will let you kind of mess with their energy field in a positive way. Don't do anything nefarious. You can actually do it to a friend. Put one hand on one side of their heart and one side on the back, not necessarily touching the skin, but see if and have them close their eyes and see if they can actually start to feel that penetration of energy you will start to feel it too. And then you can trade spaces. So that's a kind of a, these are fun little exercises you can play with um, to start to figure out your own energy. We see it in the movies and the comic books a lot where they throw light out of their hand or throw a ball of light. Like that's real. That's real. You know, I, I have the propensity to want to like do this a lot. And part of me thinks in a past life, I was able to like light out because I keep wanting to do that. And I'm like, nothing's coming out. Nothing's coming out. <laughs> but, um, we haven't so. reclaimed our toys back yet. That's exactly I know, right? wait for these toys of mine. And I, I we know. haven't reclaimed them yet. <laughs> I think I, I definitely, that's when I think I definitely came back down because I feel like I can't, like, I feel like that can happen. And it's just not yet. <laughs> so we just got to wait for those light bodies to like reactivate again in order to have yeah. that power, that special power. Well, there's ways you can do, uh, uh, well, first of all, let, let's talk about like s signs that your hand chakra is blocked. Um, sometimes uh, a lack of creativity. So if you're feeling like you have a lack of creativity, that means that there's a blockage here, which again could connect back to the heart center. But there also could be, you know, like when you have a hose, a water hose and part of it's bent, the water won't go, won't go through it. Sometimes we can kind of start to un unravel that and start with the hands. Um, you can have a disbelief. And your own power to heal yourself. Whoa. Like how many people in, in our timeline right now don't think they can heal themselves. Therefore, they run off to the doctor. Well, and hello, hello. Zip, zap, zappity do. Exactly. You know, isn't, this, isn't this just the most telling times for that, right? Right. Yeah. So there you go. And I, I, I shared something on Twitter of this woman talking about how much she just dis distrusts now all these institutions. And I shared, I said, girl, same. I said, if I break my leg, I'm just going to sprinkle glitter on it and wish for the best because I'm not going back um, to any of these institutions. <laughs> like I'm going to, exactly. I'm going to work this out myself. Um, you can also experience yeah. swollen joints. That's a sign of a blocked uh, hand chakra. If you have experienced swollen joints, arthritis, that's something I've struggled with in the past. I have it knock on wood. I haven't had any flare ups since lockdown. So that tells you something. Um, and also tennis elbow. So that is my mother used to struggle with that. If you have, they call it it's tendonitis in the elbow. They call it tennis elbow. That's big. That's a big one. So if you're struggling with tennis elbow, don't go running to the doctor. Well, my advice is not to go running to the doctor for you know steroids or whatever. Um, let's work on the hand chakras because something is blocked. And well, the heart chakra, right? The, heart, the chakra. heart chakra, because the the source of the hand, uh, the, the the hand chakras are literally the heart. So yeah. What are, what are you, what are you, where are your feelings and your emotions blocked up? Where are you not following your heart? Where are you in denial of your own power? What, what are you doing that you don't want to be doing? What are you drawing into yourself that you should be saying no to? What are you saying no to that you should be drawing into yourself? Yes. You know? These are the questions, yes, that you, how you start healing that. And isn't it interesting because a lot, there's a lot of therapies out there that deal with like art therapy, um, stuff involved mm. drawing, uh, drawing yeah. mandalas is a big one. And, and isn't that interesting? You're using the work of the hands in order to heal 
So they, they work together, right? They're, exactly. they, they work out, they shoot out together. Um, if to you heal have- the heart, exactly. And it's so, sorry to, to, to interrupt you, Bryce, but it just oh makes God. so much sense because when we're looking at kids, for example, doing art therapy after traumas or just trying to understand a child, the way they're communicating if they can't speak, or adults, how many times? I mean, you talk about the mandalas. That's part of the mentorship programs we do. Mandalas, drawing. Uh, mandalas is a big order of the day, you know. Yeah. Um, creating. And it's so true because through that, you're getting the energy flowing from your heart. and. Exactly. Um, and, and allowing the love to flow in the way you express because your hands are symbols of expression, really, yeah. you know? Yeah. So how writing. are you expressing? What exactly, writing, drawing, creating, painting, pottery, um, anything, anything, cooking, planting, you yes. know, anything. I'm yeah. a huge it's- believer in automatic writing and what that basically, in my mind, if you just sit down with a pen, pen and a piece of paper and you just start writing, don't let yourself stop even if it's just gibberish and it makes no sense, all of a sudden things are going to start to come out that you've been suppressing. And it's, it's like you've had this block on that. You've not yeah. taken off. And yeah. Yeah. Oh my and gosh. It starts flowing. Yeah. Yeah. And no one has to see it. It's not like somebody's going to grade your automatic writing. You, you don't have to show anybody. Yeah. It's just, it doesn't have to be neat. The words don't have to be spelled right. You just keep writing and just see, but it's going to, if you don't give your, yourself a chance to stop, so if you don't stop, you just keep going, then you're not giving your mind that chance to like slip in and block again. Right. So you're allowing that energy to flow out, you know, um, with a well-balanced and you're going to basically have the opposite. You're going to have your creative flow. You're not, you're going to have pretty uh, limber joints in the hand. Uh, You're also going to have an expression of desire and passion. You're going to want that desire. You're going to want that passion. That's so if you're feeling like passion less, whether that's an art in the bedroom, whatever it is, then look and see what's again blocked, what's blocked. But if you're feeling that desire for passion, then obviously there's something free flowing perfectly well balanced within your whole system. Now we can also start to heal this too. I thought this was really interesting. I listened to somebody talk about this because I knew some of the other healing modalities, but this one I thought, Ooh, this is good. And I had never heard this before. Start working with textiles. So go out during the day and actually start to feel different fabrics, make a point to feel I've got some of my cards. You'll feel the cards and register what you're actually feeling, you know, feel Feel the rocks. If you have crystals and rocks, like feel them and really take note of what's happening within that sensation of, of, of feeling, uh, feel foods, like touch, touch a banana, touch, um, you know, don't, don't stick your hand in somebody be else's conscious, food. Yeah, yeah. Be conscious. And, and, you know, it's like, I love what you're saying there. Sorry to interrupt you. Oh, you're it's fine. like, you know, um, Tich Nhat Hanh says, you know, like every step, you know, just walk love into the earth. So be conscious of every step. I, for example, have done a lot of barefoot hiking up yeah. like Table Mountain and stuff. And it's amazing. People go, oh, but it really is. It's like, doesn't matter as long as it's not too cold. But, you know, it's about putting your foot one step ahead of the other and consciously treading and lightly treading. Think if you're wearing trainers or something, you're just walking crunch, crunch, crunch on the ground, you know. And now it's like you're putting your foot down consciously and you're stepping lightly, you're treading lightly on the earth, you're leaving a light footprint. And I think it's very much the same thing as well with your hands to touch because what is more tactile than your hands? Every moment of every day, we're touching our baby's face. We touch our lover. We touch our mother. We touch our father. We touch our kids. We, we hold, there are such um, appendages of joy, right? It's so power. it's just, yeah. It's yeah. Yeah. And it's, it's, I, I was, um, yeah, it's, uh, even your animals, like when you go to pet your animals, like you're not going to aggressively, you're very lovingly. And that's coming from, from the heart. And my dog, my dog, if you stop petting him, he gets pissed off. It comes bops you to keep petting him, you know? So, um, you know, he wants, he wants to, and we feel that like, think about when you get a really nice massage or a really nice Reiki session and you actually feel 
some shifting happening, not just the sensation of the massage, but you actually can feel whether the person's energy that's touching you is coming through pure or not. You can feel that you can register that, you know, these are our tentacles of power and, and they can be used. I mean, that's kind of the thing. I mean, they say once we grew thumbs, that's when this planet turned gangster. Cause then we learned how to shoot guns. We learned how to, you know, but that's your, that's your choice, your free will, right? Either you can use these well, tentacles. I, like the I know. Well, in Venus, that says in Venus, they have apparently just four fingers, which I'm really super curious about. So um, just the four. I um, like us. I like myself. Like my thumbs. I'm like my thumbs. <laughs> so I'm like, how does that actually be without thumbs? But, but, but I'll come to Earth. I'll come back to Earth just to get the thumbs. thumbs. <laughs> um, well, but how powerful is that, right? So we came to a planet where we have thumbs, which means we can make these things we can do damage but we can also do love you can take your thumb and wipe a tear away from somebody's face you know you can take your thumbs and knead into somebody's back where maybe they have a bit of a, a, a so that's your power that's your choice like what are you going to do with these what are you going to do with with these like that comes from your own free will you know, and so that's, that's where the power is. So um, also your fingers have different uh, sensations, different elements attached to them. So the yes. thumb is attached with worry. And so we can, and, and digestion and a headache. Now, I don't know all the pressure points on the thumb. I know for meditation, different energy cycles, but that means that if you've got a headache, we're going to talk about whether it's the feet as well. When next time we talk about the feet, um, there are places you can press on your thumb. I know that um, you can stick your thumb under uh, cold or hot water to, to create a different sensation in the body, right? Like for me, if I get really, really, really cold, which I get cold very easily because it's always hot here. So when it gets a little cold, I get, I turn into a baby. I can go stick my thumb under hot water, just my thumb, and it will immediately start to warm the body up, right? Um, digestion. So uh, index finger is fear. So and fear can relate to back pain. Yes. T uh, problems with your teeth, toothaches. And so you can work with, and I would suggest that that's something you guys are interested in finding a Reiki healer near you that can actually teach you how to work with that modality with just the fingers. And they're also in the feet too, which again, we're going to talk about next week uh, is the feet. Uh, middle finger, the middle finger is uh, anger, which makes sense, right? We give the bird, we, that's anger, right? So uh, that can also <laughs> be fatigue, eye strain, dry cough. Right. So, so that makes perfectly, that makes perfect. Somebody at some point knew that that meant anger and that's why this happened. Right. So um, <laughs> somebody knew this, right. Exactly. Now here's the interesting thing that I was like, holy crap. When I saw this, the ring finger. So here's my left finger, which we always put the rings when we get married on our left finger. Well, the re ring finger is associated with grief. And also mm -hmm. I was going to say, letting go and breathing this is the finger that's associated with your respiratory system your how lungs yes absolutely how mm -hmm. interesting is that that's where they put the the wedding band on is the finger that's associated with breathing letting go grief it's almost like they knew it's almost yeah, like exactly. they knew. and it's like uh, I, in fact i've been i i i remember that well, i know that from a long time ago with especially the left, the ring finger, because it really, it's the lungs, the, mm -hmm. the respiratory system, as you say, grief. So it's your freedom, breathing, grief. And how many people don't feel trapped, <sighs> uh, claustrophobic, caged in, grief, grief stricken in a marriage? Yeah. Right? Yeah. See, I don't, I, I don't ever wear rings and I stopped wearing rings when I started, when I became a Mysore teacher, because I don't wear rings when I practice because it pinches um, in different, and, but, but when I started teaching Mysore, I didn't wear rings either because I didn't want to uh, accidentally cut a student with a ring. And now I have a really hard time putting rings on every time I put a ring on, like it, it bothers me, it bothers my hand. So I just never really wear them anymore. But it's interesting when you start to look at, uh, you know, I know people who uh, have been in bad marriages that are, they're all of a sudden their, their left ring will, uh, finger will start to swell around the ring and they can't get the ring off there. It's, it's the body's always, 
we lie to ourselves all the time. We all, we're always lying to ourselves, but our body isn't. Our body, yeah, it's telling you. Body how always it keeps the score. Absolutely. Exactly. It talks to us all the time. We've got to learn to speak the lingo of the body, and it's so true. And I mean, I also know a friend who, with the, uh, he, he ended his engagement with, with his long term partner, and two days later, he broke his ring finger. Um, it was like this big blue sausage thing stuck it out there. And I know how you're feeling. You know, yep. it's, so, it's so clear as well, Shane, yeah. So clear, <laughs> so clear. I have a tend to propensity to have um, sensation in my left arm a lot in my practice. And that's something I have to work on is my left, um, is that, and I know it's coming from a specific particular, actually, I think it is actually coming from this finger uh, because it travels up through the hand. And so every time, it doesn't happen all the time, but every time I feel it, I go, okay, all right, I have to, I have to like, med I have to figure, I have to release something. Something is telling me that there's an, there's a misalignment within, if there's a misalignment in your body, then there's a misalignment in the energetic field. And so why that's, that's my domain. That's where I, that's, a, that's the power move is I get to figure this out. And the body is just the GPS. Yeah. I'm just saying, Hey, Hey, something's off. Cause your mind's going to lie to you all the time. Well, the pinky is associated with trying are trying to do something, trying. And that is also connected to the nervous system. And it's also connected to the throat. So a lot of times sore throats associated with the pinky, which think about that guy's trying. Yeah. Yes. I was going to say, for me, I also know the pinky to be communication, which yes. makes a lot of sense if it's connected to the throat. Yeah. Yeah. And when we're trying to, how many people do we know, including ourselves, who are trying to stand up for ourselves, trying to speak our truths, but it's hard. It's not, you don't just do it overnight. And that's that throat, that's that inner depth, that fifth, that fifth chakra there, right? It's, it's kind of, it's yeah. always, they're working together. We talked about that with the, uh, we went over the seven chakras, these kind of, I mean, they all work together, but there's a very close relationship between these two. Yeah. And think yeah. about the energy it's closest to it's yeah. coming to this, this, um, this system. Well, now, obviously, since the palm is a huge source of energy where we can control our energy, and I mean, really, like I would even in my advice to people would be think about yourself, like being that that comic book character that can put lights at, like feel that, like feel that because that that's real. That's your energy source. Well, something too to open up a little exercise you can do. And I do this almost daily. I'll start with the right hand. You can take your left thumb place it right in the middle of the right uh, palm and then go in a clockwise position. So just kind of go in that clockwise position, moving the energy. And you can do it how, for however long you feel like you need to do it, right? To go in that clockwise position. And then after that's done, you take and press the pads of the fingers together to open up those sources of energy. Like I tell my students all the time in, in the end of the Ashtanga practice, we do a uh, uh, yoga mudra, which is this, you see it done a lot like this. This is not the mudra guys. That's the bad symbol. That's what they do. It's this because it's the pads of the thumbs. It's like a duck bill. My teacher in India is very strict about that. It's like, it's a duck bill. And we, I always want my students to spread the fingers out make sure that energy is coming out. The arms are straight. So there's a, a pathway coming straight through. And of course that cycle is working there. And when, the, when you find that intention, the devil is in the details. We'll say Krishna is in the details. Um, you, you find the power. And then you want to go to the left hand. In the left hand, you take that right thumb. And you go in that clockwise position again, always clockwise into that, that left thumb. Yeah. And then you do the same with the, the tips of the fingers and really start to work and get that pressure point going. But I find doing, doing this with my hands, whoo, that really, that really wakes things up. Right. It really, I find myself doing that because I, I'm a, for my, all my research, I know I've said this before. I never take notes on the computer. I always take them in notebooks. So I write, I, I write a lot. And so even just doing that after writing for a long time, I feel like it moves energy Works. and hand. Yeah. Yeah. That's maybe a little bit stuck. Now, if we think about, and of course, Shanti and I both uh, use exercise in a way for spirituality, right? That's kind of the yoga asana practice is using the physical body to awaken the spiritual. And I believe in my heart of hearts that any exercise can be, have the element of yoga in it where you're using it to 
discover things about yourself. But right now in the world of yoga, people are very obsessed with handstands. And so let's use a handstand as an example. You know, when you are powering up from the ground floor, if you watch people do handstands, a lot of times they're coming. I'll show you guys a lot. If you look at their hands, a lot of times they're doing this with their fingertips, right? They're powering, they're gripping from the fingertips. There's a reason for that. Those are power centers and they're pushing, yeah. right? You, you're not, you're not going to go up into a handstand and just hang out there lazily. It's not going to, it's not going to be good news for you. If you do that, you're going to fall, right? There's that power, that energy of that. And it's a protraction, right? It's that protraction. Same in like the posture downward facing dog. I tell my students all the time, downward facing dog is a variation of a handstand. And when you're in downward facing dog is one of the most common of the yoga poses. Even somebody who has never practiced, practiced yoga in their life, knows what downward dog looks like. And I tell my students all the time, especially after multiple sun salutations, when their body is a little bit warm, instead of just hanging out there and just kind of being there for five breaths, really press into the hands. See if you mm. can feel the energy coming up through the arms into the ribs, because this whole section, this whole area is part of that cycle. And children, you look at children, their ribs move. Adults yeah, they do. stuck. Your ribs are supposed to move. And so downward dog is a great stabilizing posture where you can start to connect mentally and, and activate and then mm. press into the heels and really see if you can feel that energy moving through the hands into the central body. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's powerful. It's powerful. And it's not a, it's not a heavy thing because, and because the minute you actually, you know, act Activate those, as you say, the power centers in the hand. You lift, you become lighter, actually. Yep. And you can literally feel the energy moving through the body then. When you actually taught you sucking in the navel, I've gone on freeze again. Yeah, I, we got you back. No one wants us talking that about this. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear yeah they don't want us spreading the good news about yoga right but yeah, anyway so it's so it's so true what you're saying and it's so amazing because the hands are so powerful and um and as you say you know just with that uh, by placement adjustment <clears throat> and really just focus focusing on and trusting your body right yeah oh yeah I mean, it's amazing your yeah. mind's the dumb one. Your body knows yeah. how to do this. And so if you just, and, and that's the thing about the beautiful thing about energy work is, you know, we can sit here until we're blue in the face and talk about this, but nothing's going to happen until you do it yourself. You know, exactly. you, you can bring a horse to water, but you can't make him drink. You think about dancers. Like if you look at the way dancers move their arms, they're not just haphazardly like moving their arms. There's control. There's mm -hmm. a control. And so, and what is dance? It's an element of expression. So how yeah, the hands exactly. move are expressing what's coming from that emotional connection to the art form. And when you start exactly. to connect all the dots, it's like, holy crap, how powerful are you? You know, we hmm. talk a lot about there is a posture in the fundamental sequence of Ashtanga Yoga um, uh, 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 where you take, I was going to say a Sanskrit, but I know that'll confuse people. In English, it's the hand of foot pose. And you're literally taking your, your hand and you're placing it on the ball of the foot, standing up and pulling up. And what's happening with the, of course, you're standing up, the leg is straight. What's happening here is this cycle. Now, a lot of people teach it wrong like this. It's like this because that cycle of energy that's coming from yeah. the foot into the arm, there's a cycle happening. Cycle. Yeah. So you start to actually feel that when you're standing up, it feels even different. That sensation feels different. Um, it's like when you see postures like Utida Hasta Padangustasana, uh, a, a posture in yoga where people stand up. You know, sometimes they'll hook their, their toe like this. No, you hook it by touching the index finger and then you point the toe and it locks all of that energy. Yeah. You know, we'll talk about the feet next week, but um, it locks it. And so you can start to really play with this stuff and start to figure out how, how powerful you are. And once you start to feel that, then the realization that you can heal yourself settles in as fact, not as just Absolutely. theory. Absolutely. You know? And, and, you know, it's little bits every day. I think a lot of people don't realize how simple it is. 
you know, just to cultivate good habits every day, drink two liters of water every day, um, go for a walk around the block or do half an hour of yoga or exercise three or four times a week. You know, if you just start little habits, you will see how amazing everything that becomes. Changes. Yeah, it just leads you into other things. It makes you really understand and feel, feel the benefit of doing these things. It's amazing. Yeah, it's totally amazing. And that's what I, I know I've, we've talked about this before with the body dysmorphic stuff going into this new timeline. That's one thing I really want to push forward is exercise is not something that's meant to punish you. It's a, it's a, an experience and an opportunity yeah, to figure your body out mm -hmm. and to Absolutely. understand. And I believe in my opinion, of course, I don't have a way of proving this, but in my opinion, I believe that the controllers, the powers that be, knew that there was no way they were going to stop us from actually moving because the body does crave movement. The body craves movement. You know, people like get antsy. They, they want to move. So they couldn't stop us from moving. And so they manipulated the way we saw movement. Yo, it's exercise should never be a punishment. It's always. I agree. I agree. Don't weigh yourself. Who cares about oh, your weight? Exactly. But I've always said, you know, when, when, when we look at people, for example, who will, go to the gym and take their steroids and proteins. I don't even know what they do versus people generally who do yoga. And I'm not talking about this new commercial wave that's taken over because there's also this commercial wave of yoga that's taken over. That's all about how, what outfit you're wearing and how hot your backside is or whatever, you know, that's not what yoga is about at all. Actually, it's the opposite, yeah. but um <clears throat> Often people go to gym because they don't like themselves. They're not liking what they're seeing in the mirror. They don't like that they've picked up weight over December or their belly's too big or they don't like themselves on a physical level particularly. You see, and that's the difference. So you're fighting against yourself all the time and you're not getting the results you want. Yeah. Now, people generally who understand the essence of yoga, we love ourselves. We do yoga because we love ourselves, because we want to give our body that stretching, twisting, breathing, uh, delicious experience. It's a very different mindset. And again, this is just, uh, this, is, this is really, I'm, 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 I'm speaking about this because it's important, I think, that we can explain how the, mind, how the mindset affects us. Yeah. So you're often going to find people We'll do yoga and yoga, you don't mean to sweat, by the way. It's not like this pump, 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 pump thing. Yoga is really about building strength, building flexibility, connecting to the mind and understanding the whole universe on a much deeper, le deeper level. The physical postures is really just one aspect of yoga. Yeah. And do you know how many people actually lose weight like that? The minute oh, they start man. Yoga? And we not because, yeah, not because they're running and jumping and sweating and doing whatever. They, they, they are at ease with themselves and they're relaxing. And then the weight just falls off and the body just finds its natural way it wants to be. We have yeah. a joke in Ashtanga when people first start, they, they usually drop a lot of weight and we call it Ashtanga Rexic, where all of a sudden people start to get like, and that's happened to me before in the past, especially in second series where I had a hard time keeping weight on. And it's because you're also flushing out the lymphatic system as well. Yep. And stress can cause the harm, the cortisone, it can cause all this stuff to happen to the body. And once you start to move that, it starts yeah. to flush itself out. And absolutely. And, I, and, and it does, you know, it, and I noticed too, with, and I, I'm the per type of person that when I get really stressed out, I actually won't eat. I kind of forget that's the Vata in me, but I find with people who have the propensity to eat when they're stressed, when they start to work on that in yoga, they find it, they don't need to, they don't have the need to snack anymore. And so their body is finding that equilibrium within the energy they're bringing in as well, versus what they're putting out in the practice. Cause it's all energy. It's all an energy exactly. exchange with yourself exactly. for exactly. sure. And that's it's why, beautiful. yeah, yoga people and dancers too, always tend to have very long lean muscles. And it's because you're actually pulling and strengthening at the same time. And that yeah. blood, that blood, that flat, that flush of blood is coming through. And, um, it's, I know it, it, uh, <laughs> I had somebody ask me once when I was director of yoga for wellness Nurse of America, they're like, 
guy who wasn't a yoga. He was like, so how do, how do I get a yoga body? And I like looked at the guy and I was like, well, well you, you do yoga. Like there's no, like come to a class. Do like, yoga. Hello. <laughs> like, 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 maybe there's some secret thing I can tell you to do at the gym to give you, no, if you want a long, if you're somebody who wants a long lean, like body, then, then do yeah. yoga. Like that's what you do. And I love the, and I love the fact that we don't use weights or anything. You work according to your own body weight. So yeah. you are building muscles according to your body. You're building strength according to your body. You're not over pumping things yeah. up. Yeah. No, it's and amazing. So- Think about that too. My teacher in India did a conference on this actually, where he spoke about weightlifting and he talked about how that weightlifting isn't actually real strength. You're not really that strong, but a yoga person, like if, if I was be- having to be rescued from a burning building, I would rather have a yoga student come get me than a weightlifter because the yoga student, the weight they're lifting is their body weight, but they're doing it in a way that's moving. They're constantly moving with the weight. So they know they have that mobility. They know how to like control it and find the equilibrium. So if I need someone to carry me out of of a burning building, I'm going to want a yoga person to do it because they're going to be able to lift up and find the mobility um, that the the equilibrium that the body wants. And and it's super, I mean, when you start to realize like how magical human beings are, you also start to get that sovereignty back. And you stop, you you know, you're like, no, we're so special. We're so special. And the good thing with the hands, I think too, especially for people who are super new to the chakras, this is something that I think is actually a pretty good place to start because your hands are so relatable. We use our hands all day. And so to start paying attention to like thoughts behind your actions with your hands, you know, and how to, how to flush that energy. And then, and then of course that will bring you into even deeper work within that. Yeah. yeah. It's beautiful. Yeah. I love it. It's wow. so beautiful. Yeah. And it connects Yay. you. Yay. So yeah. look after your hands, everybody. Love them. Be kind to them. Be nice. You see the expressions of everything here. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Oh, Bryce. So awesome to have you on again. I miss you, crazy girl. I know. And it's really good to have you back. And thank you for an awesome topic again tonight. It's so interesting. And it's just wonderful. Yeah. Are we going to do feet next? Because I know you know. We are doing the feet, honey. These feet were made for walking. Oh, yeah. (laughs) Feet are, oh, I love the feet. They are even, they are super powerful. So, yeah, for sure, for sure. Yeah. So, um, and I'm like, I'm always barefoot, Shanti. So I'm all, I never have shoes on. So I'm the same. I'm the same, except now in winter when it's chilly. No, then I'll definitely make my compromises. But, um, uh, any other time that I can walk around barefoot or slip slops, yeah. you know, just, just normal slip slops. I am so happy. Yeah. And, um, I just love it. But we look forward to that because if you think the hands are powerful, mm, wait for the feet. Yep. So, which we will be talking about next week on Wellness Wednesday with our beautiful Bryce Watson from Esoteric Atlanta. Thank you, lovely, so much once again. Really appreciate your being here. Amazing Thank you. show. Thank you. Thank you. Love you guys. Yeah. Thank you so much, guys, for watching. I uh, really love having Bryce on and all her interesting chats. And it's such a lovely soul sister talking things that we both enjoy. Really cool. And I hope you guys enjoy it too. So if you haven't already, please give us a like, a share, and a subscribe. We're here on U- uh, Solutions with Aquarius Rising Africa tonight. Uh, please give Aquarius Love Rising Africa too. Uh, like and a subscribe as well as well as our rumble channel because we're going to be moving more onto rumble now because we've had another two strikes on our new channel that's gone up less than a month ago um but clearly they've got their eye on us all good we're doing something right so follow us on rumble (laughs) take good care of yourselves god bless you all bye-bye